Hello there and welcome to the summer. Here we have a Monocore DMT2042 multimeter that was my late father's and I found it in a box. It's still got the old protective film on it so it's still kind of new in that respect but old in every other respect and it's in a sad state. So it would be nice to see if we could actually get this running again. It might just need a couple of batteries which would be great or something a little bit more severe. Let's see how these look after. Oh, what is that? Well, that's not what I was expecting because in fact, it doesn't even say what cell you need. <laughs> ah, dearie me, I think we're gonna have to dig deeper into this one. If I can find a suitable size screw, it's not stripping it. So I don't know about multimeters. We've had these discussions on this channel many a time, and uh, I've shown you my massive collection of multimeters, yet the one that I tend to still use on that daily basis, um, which is one of these ones, although I have a couple of these now, so I've got spares. There's just something comforting about the old meter. All right, let's see if we can peel this off. There we go. Isn't that a cute little thing? What's that on the back? <laughs> so you can see, ow, what the heck? Something just bit me, bloody things. Right, you can see there, there's a little tab and that tab actually pokes through uh, into something here. So maybe that's acting as a kind of ground plane. You've got a little fuse there. And again, nothing here that says what that battery is or the voltage. So I'll see if I have to go a little bit deeper. I am very wary now, knowing that there is some insects out there. Look, there's one there too. What the heck could this be? Yeah, that's not good. So just gently prizing those little plastic tabs. We don't want this to succumb to my brute force attempts to get in there. So I'm not sure where we got this from. Often the case was with these that they would be from a high street shop like a Tandy. So it may be one of those or possibly a Maplin, but Tandy was always a bit nearer to us. Peeling it back. That's what's inside. Look at that. That's quite neat. There's quite a lot more regular through hole components on this than I was expecting, to be honest. So there's all your resistors. Diode, more resistors, a couple of capacitors, an adjustment thing, and this IC here, which is marked as a UMC UM7106F. 9438S 810610, probably standard multimeter chip. I might Google that though just to see if there's anything about the voltage. Now, again, no indication here on what the voltage might be, so maybe we'll just start applying some voltage. So I might solder a couple of wires onto this and we'll hook them up to the bench power supply and just start gingerly turning it up. We're hooked up and I did notice actually here it does say 9 volt GP10A or SR45X. So there is a battery rating, 9 volts. So I've got the bench power supply actually hooked up, you can see this little wire here, but I've got it set to 1.5. So I am going to up the voltage now, 2, 3, 4, Five, and you can see the battery warning symbol is on the meter. Six, seven, eight, and nine. The meter is happy. The battery warning went away. That's rather jolly, isn't it? So, what would be a bit of fun now is that we have it on the voltage DC 200 range, which would be okay. Let's measure 
and measuring now the bench power supply output will confirm it. So the bench power supply says it's 9.02 volts. Oh, what happened? Oop, there you go, it's gone off again. Let's try that. Oh, I'm wondering now, maybe it, maybe it can't measure its own power supply voltage. I have to have a little think about that. Maybe I'll just grab a battery. So we've got an Amazon. That's weird. Now I have to think about that because you always think of our multimeters are kind of isolated. So if you try to measure their own power supply, what will happen? Mm -hmm. 1.4, 1.5, 1.9. Well, he's a bit jittery. Let's go down one more in the range. And we will go again. 1.6. Close enough, eh? Close enough. Great. So, well, that seems to work. So if we have the appropriate battery, we'll be good to go. Now, how are these constructed? Because this is where it's going to be a bit tricky. I think I'm going to go for... Let's unbend that now. I can definitely push it back. I think that's what we'll have to do, so let's keep going. To find something a bit thinner. It's one of those things where you're going to slip and stab yourself in a very unpleasant way. Just going to try it this way. Yeah, that's worked. Come on. Come on. It's almost as if they didn't expect you to ever have to do this. That's it, it's just literally a nail. Pretty much a nail. Now, although I am going to heat up the old soldering iron and see if we can get that back in, I'm not entirely sure how you would get it back in. I suppose you just post it down. Oh, oh. let's have a look. Well, it's unlikely you're going to want to solder it and draw it, withdraw it, so you would have to, to post it this way. But they'd have to have a very thin thing to go down the side of the tube with that wire in place. But they must have achieved it. So we will also. Right, got that stripped off. Let's have a look, shall we? Grab it. Now I'm going to hold the button down on this iron, which will boost the temperature up. You'll see it there. Because this, basically a nail, is going to take a lot of heat out of the joint. Oh, well, I think we might just got away with it. Looks good enough. This will be the challenging part, convincing it to get down here. I think I've got just the thing. So you're looking at an old windshield wiper, and it's the bit of metal that accompanies the blade. I think, <laughs> I, think I managed to jam it in a bit while I was messing. Right, so the idea is that we're going to place this behind the pin as you can see we're soldered to the side of the pin if we can get that right in like that look at that and actually it's just starting to protrude but I'm going to push it on the edge of the bench right so I've got it out a little bit, but just enough to grab it. Yeah, 
That's a proper job, that is. Right, it's all assembled again, and you can see it's measuring the voltage more or less as it was before. Looks pretty good. So now I'm going to switch it though into the ohms range, and I'm going to switch that. It's on the 20k because I do have a resistor here which is a 1k. Let's see what it says. Ooh, 0.9593. I mean, that's probably actually within tolerance. Let's go to the 2k range. Mmm. Isn't that nice, eh? That's not bad at all. I think it's worth me obtaining that battery, and uh, I might just leave even the plastic on as it's keeping it in pristine condition. A new multimeter to add the, to the stable. Now, <laughs> just before I put it away, I did notice it does have a mains range. What do you think? Are these probes well rated for mains? Yeah, probably. Just keep your fingers away from this end. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching.